And we don't use corporal punishment here. Okay, so just verbal abuse? Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. Welcome to an all new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle, and Money Mike Crawford. What's up, big guy? How you doing? I'm good, man. How you? How you, man? How you? Oh, um, I'm doing okay. But I'm gonna be honest. This one's gonna start off a little intense. So if you want to skip ahead a few minutes, go for it. But I just got to be honest. Uh, I was getting ready <laughs> for this podcast. I went to the gym earlier, getting ready for this podcast. So. I was just like, hey, dude, give me 15 minutes. I wanted to jump in the shower because I went to the gym and I was gross. So I go in the shower and then I'm like, oh, I think I got a little bit more than a fart. And I was like, you know what? You're good. You're in the shower. You already washed your butt, but you can do it again. So I went to go let it out. And it was like the exorcist. Like on the wall, <laughs> like sprayed out green because I ha- and it was guess what it was? It's so gross. It was green drink, and then when I got home from the gym, it I ate a can of tuna. <laughs> and it's so gross. Sorry. That's very disgusting way to start the show. <laughs> Well, that being like, said, I do. Uh, so we'll move quickly on from that. But I had to be honest about what just happened to me because that was like uh, 20 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so now into the episode. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Uh, <laughs> this is the time to start. Uh, so that being said, I did go to the gym. I've been going regularly. Uh, so I do have a gym session to update for you. Uh, last week when I was all on my lonesome, um, I kind of was talking about my observations at the gym and I went into detail about one dude in particular that was like, you know, Donnie dickhead guy that's like super, you know, he's ripped and everything, but it's just like, oh, come on guy, like that guy. So I befriend this guy at the gym the other day, not this guy in particular, but turns out this guy's friend. I didn't know this at the time. I like the guy's shirt. I'm like, oh, nice shirt, bro. Uh, it's actually one of the bands that's the Spotify playlist this week. I was like, oh, nice shirt, dude. And he was like, oh, thanks. So we chat for a minute and whatever. He's like, you like this? Black metal? I was like, yeah, hey, yeah, I love everything black. Durr. So, uh, we, you know, we talk for a second, whatever, we go work out. I see him at the end of the workout, and he's sitting down talking to this dude and I'm like damn it but I wanted to go up and say like hey thanks for you know the recommendations on the playlist or whatever and he's like yeah 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 right on but he was sitting with that guy and I'm like man does that mean this guy's actually cool and he just works out really weird or and I'm not giving the guy the benefit of the doubt or is this other guy just like tool bags like me and this other guy (laughs) So you're asking yourself this question. I don't know. I guess so. I'm just thinking out loud here on the Black Irish podcast. <laughs> it's like you blanked out for one second, bro. Uh, well, I was kind of waiting to see if you had a response, you know, since this is a joint effort with, you know, synergy. We, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, we're one body and mind sometimes. And sometimes yeah. not. Let me ask you this. Yeah. How do you feel about people that go to the gym in jeans? I don't know because I don't go to the gym. Right I now. know, but okay. Imagine in this dream scenario, Mike. Well, why would you go? To why the, are you fighting me so about. much on this today? You don't want to talk to me. Who, you mad at me? Is, what happened? Who, what did I do? Who is at the gym in jeans, bro? That's what I'm saying. Like I'm seeing people. Like I was talking last week about guys in hats and sunglasses in the gym, and it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this week it got upgraded to jeans, and I'm like, goodness me, it's getting worse. <laughs> 
Like, I get it. You're working on your upper body, but don't act like your balls and ass aren't sweating if you're doing a good workout. Like, get in regular uh, he's a, clothes. He's probably a serial killer, bro. Like, stay away from... No, it. it's it just... It's all these young kids because it's near a I'm telling, college. I'm it's near you, a local no. college. I'm telling you, bro. Dickheads. He's probably a serial killer. If you ever find out his name, seven years from now, he's going to kill at least three people. Look, Why? If he wears... If he wears jeans at the gym, I'm Who's telling you. Who's your favorite now. serial killer? I don't <laughs> My favorite serial killer? Yeah. Uh, technically speaking, my, I don't have a favorite serial killer. All right. My most respected serial killer is probably... There we go. Hitler. Oh, my gosh. I did not see that coming. <laughs> so oh. That's it. <laughs> Not because he killed so many people, because I hate the fact that he killed the Jews. Ooh. But oh, I gotta respect I... any any man that can get a whole bunch of people that don't look like him to listen to every word he said and follow him has to be a fucking genius. I wanted to know what the hell he was saying in these rallies and in these meetings. Well, it's recorded, bro. You can't get these. Get these dumbasses. I don't understand it. It's in their fucking language, bro. Well, it's translated all over the place, bro. Don't be lazy. You're going to be yeah, throwing out statements like that, man. Loose. Read up. But those translations are loose, just like the Bible, sorry to say, because you can't translate certain languages directly. So they're Yes, you absolutely can. Nowadays, you 100% can. No, because there's words that certain languages have that others don't. So there's no way right. to translate it directly. And those, they usually put in parentheses like, this is the closest word we have to what they're describing. It, I mean, come on, brother. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I don't, when something's loosely translated, it kind of kind of throws it off. But with that being said, no disrespect, you know, but honestly speaking, there had to be some hell of a stories. But he's not even like, I mean, he's the most notorious, like, mass killer but he's not like wasn't i know this is just like you know stalin killed more people than hitler is a commonly thrown around thing but it's like he's just more famous than the other guy i mean he just killed he just had more flair he was artsy about and it. to my mind i would put him in the serial killer category because that shit was you had to be fucking yeah, back shit crazy to what, do what he did what what technically qualifies as a serial killer but um I thought it was just multiple, uh, multiple. You have to be killing. You have no to be reason. a fucking genius. Imagine if he used that talent or calculated towards some or positive shit. Kind of what he could have accomplished. I know, right? That's the thing that that sucks about people like that that have that type of influence over people. Influence. It's like, like come you on, got that type of influence on people, and you decided to influence them to try to extinguish a race instead of on something positive that could have. Listen, we're wild and crazy legacy. kids over here. I, I'm acknowledging that, and we don't shy away from anything. But listen, we're renegades of love, okay? Like, we just do shit a different way, but it's all out of love, and it's to just have fun with it and fucking lighten the mood a little bit, people. So, you know, oh, take it with man. a grain of laughter. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. No, no, no. I'm saying <laughs> in general. Because I also offend oh. people quite a bit. Because guess what? Yeah. My hands are getting jacked up at the gym. But I don't think I could be the guy that wears gloves. <laughs> You're going to have to wear gloves. But I'm like, ugh. Like, I no, know 100%. A gym for a good, I, like if you're going to be a gym guy, gloves are part of the wardrobe. But I, I know 100% that <laughs> it would be helpful to me. There's no doubt in my mind it's like this would definitively improve your life because your hands wouldn't be blistery all the time. You wouldn't be peeling off calluses and all this kind of crap. But I just I, I can't bring myself to do it. I don't think you I sound like, You sound like Peyton before you got to Denver, bro. You'll come around. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> <You'll go around. laughs> I don't think I can. But I did. To. Like the thing is, with free weights, it's like they have those little grips on them, and it's the like grips, those man. perforated grips and you the metal handles, do? and it's like son of a bitch, dude. You can become extra strong and just lift it on the extra tight ones that don't have the grip. 
It's going to be a shit ass. Your arms are extra close because, you know, there's always a piece with no. Yeah, but that only works out a certain area. You know, like if you really want to do a full workout of every side of the muscle, you know, it's different angles. So Mike's audio just went out, but I'll just ramble until he comes back because I'm pretty good at that. I can't even if I was going to wear gloves. Um. do i have you back that's my fault bro you're all good yeah, so fault. even if i was gonna wear gloves like would i wear fingerless gloves which would be more comfortable but like that's extreme that's the most extreme or do i wear regular gloves what what would you pick i'm probably going flat out gloves and i'm sorry to the people uh i live in a state where we got shit ass weather right now so my internet connection just went out and if it goes out brendan will carry y'all i'm sure he's a great guy he can finish the show great guy. That has but, uh, to do with anything it does man you're no, a great guy and you can finish the show because you got skills like that bro we'll see i'm trying to be a good parent get those skills up but my kids are growing oh. up so damn fast, brother. My little one. So we <laughs> just did parent. birthday for the nine. And then we just had three to four, which is like, uh, you're not a toddler anymore. You're officially not a toddler anymore. And, you know, it's slightly <laughs> heartbreaking. You know, it's just like that little piece is like, you're, man, that little piece of you is just never going to, we're never going to be able to visit that again. Like, we'll just remember it in our hearts, but we'll never be able to visit that again. But, Moving on from that, like, how much cool shit do we get to do now that you're a little bit older, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So, um, so we did have his birthday, which was the other day on Sunday. And I don't know, like, we're, this year we kind of went big on the, on the birthdays just because it's been wild, you know, for everybody, especially the kids the last couple of years. So it's like, you know what, now that everything's kind of normal, let's let's kind of put into this let's go a little overboard this year and then you know we'll steady out next year you know uh so we did we got a bunch of presents of you know he kind of rambled off a list of things it's like let's get him a little bit of everything or you know whatever we can so uh we decorated the night before did all that kind of stuff uh so we woke up we let him open a couple of presents first thing in the morning he got his special little lucky charm cereal which, hey, what's the uh, what's the cereal update? What's your current uh, situation, cereal situation? Mm-hmm. My current, current, so current uh, cereal situation is I just have Honey Nut Cheerios. The boys, have, that's what they eat every single day is Honey Nut Cheerios. They're hooked. The Honey Nut Cheerios, you can't you can't go wrong with Honey, honey Nut Cheerios. They're like Procter like, and Gamble. It's just Steady yeah, Eddie. Like, you just can't Steady Eddie, baby. Can't go wrong with that, baby. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. That's uh, and then I life. got um they do a little mix up sometimes. I have the strawberry something frosted flakes. Okay. You know, I love me. I'm a strawberry lover, man. Like, like, you throw strawberry on something, I'm gotta at least try it, bro. Like, what about strawberry special K? <laughs> I never had it, but I guess I Because special K the cereal K. is kinda and the strawberries are just in there, so yeah. I don't know how that yeah, is. Like this you is don't, you don't have like, it's a strawberry flavor, and I'm not gonna lie to you, like they're not the greatest. I prefer the, I'm still a natural frosted flakes guy, but I had to give them a try. Mm. They, I had cinnamon toast the crunch for the first time in a while recently, and I was like, Yeah, it's still good, but it's not as good as I remember. You know what I mean? I, have, I had Apple Jacks recently, and they are a lot better than I remember. Yeah, you know what's I funny know is so is that. honeycomb. <laughs> Honeycomb is a lot better than I remember. Ooh, I haven't had honeycomb in a while. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're going to have this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to give them a shot. I ain't had oh, get some cool Ooh. ranch Doritos and some honeycomb. A little hot, a little sweet, a little spicy. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, yo. Damn, you just took me back. Like, I think I ain't had honeycomb since, like, maybe, like... <laughs> middle school like dude a long time since I, me I too know. and i was like i got it for the kids and i was like here because we were just running through cereals like through the pandemic it was like oh yeah cereal the kids just fell in love with it because cereal is awesome and it was like let's and just go easy. let's buy a new one or two like we'll keep a couple standards like life and honey nut cheerios in the cupboard at all times and then we'll rotate like two other cereals one box at a time and just kind of see you know like what they like. What's up, man? That's a good message and right so, there. I might have to steal that. 
Honeycomb was one that came along, and it was one night I went outside, got elevated, and I came in, and I was like, whatever. I don't really, I'll eat a shoe right now, but cereal, honeycomb, cool. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Oh. No, that's how, that's how it happens, man. Did you ever have waffle, waffle crisp cereal as a kid? No. I had golden crisp, but I never had waffle crisp. Yeah, that shit was good. All right, all right, all right, cereal update. So, anyway, so then uh, we move on from cereal, and it was like we played uh, with some of the toys that he opened for his birthday, the four-year-old's birthday, and got ready. My nine-year-old was going to a friend's birthday party at one of those jump trampoline park thingies. Indoor Which is park amazing. Things. So he was going there for a couple hours. So I was like, perfect. I'll get some one-on-one time with my little guy. Um, that'll be rad. So... Took him mini golfing and, you know, to a place that was like a little putt-putt and had an arcade inside. So we did that for a little while. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Then then I went and we took him. I was like, what do you want for lunch? Anything you want. And he's like, pizza. And I was like, all right. But my boy can't have cheese. You know that. Just like you. So uh, I take him to one of those places where it's like, you know, you do your own pizza. It's little individual pizzas. And you say, I was like, cool, we could just go get sauce and whatever you want. He's like, pepperoni. I'm like, rad, pepperoni. So we go up and I was like, I'm good. But, you know, iced tea and pepperoni and chocolate milk. He's like, chocolate milk. I'm like, dude, you and milk. It's like, I don't know. I was like, okay, whatever. I was like, you know what? I was like, I was like, no, because it's chocolate milk. They're not going to have that. But this little fool remembers because I guess grandma takes him there sometimes. So he remembered that they have chocolate milk. So we get up to the register. I'm like, all right, chocolate milk. You get it, buddy. <laughs> so he's just happy as a pig in shit. You know, we're waiting for the pizza. We got ZZ Top, sharp dressed man, like rocking on the on the speakers and that we're sitting down he's just like jamming dancing in the booth it was like the cutest thing ever and i was just like oh my son's enjoying his birthday like that's all you want as a parent you know what i mean like he doesn't Mm -hmm. need it to be flashy or anything he just wanted no cheese pizza and chocolate milk and that just he's like he's like hell yeah man today's awesome so we did that which was cool uh and then so we came home kind of chilled out mom and brother got back from the birthday party and then we were like, let's just go ahead go ahead and open the rest of your presents, bro. Go. Like, there's no need to wait till the end of the day. Because at first it was like, you know, it was thrown out there like, oh, yeah, the big one we'll do at the end of the day. And that, I'm like, hang on a second. Why, why are we going to wait till the end of the day so we can't <laughs> play with it all day till the end of the day? I never understood that about Christmas either. Like when you gather with family and it's like you have a dinner Christmas and it's like, okay, after dinner, after dessert, then we do the presents, all this stuff. It's like, why wouldn't you do it in the very beginning? Like walk in the door as soon as everybody gets there, pass out presents. That way the kids are entertained the whole damn time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's what you do. You walk in there just passing out presents. Be like, hey, let's start this party off with happiness. You know what I mean? Let's not drag it out. To be like, okay, kids, you better behave. That was how it went down back in the day. It was like, if you don't behave, you ain't getting this shit at the end until the end. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's like, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. Is and that you how you grew up? Was it was mind. the end of the? But did you always get birthday presents? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, I think so too. Something. I can't remember, but I think there may have been a couple of times where it was like weird in between years, and it was like, uh, just pick what you want for dinner. <laughs> Yeah, it would Which always, was always yeah, like I mean, something. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't always something big. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. it was just dinner. What you want for dinner? Like going out to eat for your birthday. Exactly. Like, a cake, an ice cream. Just yeah, we. Yeah, them. like my mom would sometimes make like a big cookie. Uh, she did that a few times because I didn't really like cake. I wasn't a cake guy. Um, so we would do that, and they would be like, "You could pick whatever fast food you want," because I was. You know, that was a big deal in my house. <laughs> like, to be able to get you fast never food. Tell me. And then, dude, it was like, like, when everything was going pretty smooth in life, it was like mm-hmm. everybody got to pick something, but like that person got like a drink as well, like the birthday person. <laughs> 
Or they got to pick whatever they wanted and, and, you know, the parents, like, had parameters for the other kids. But, like, (laughs) usually it was like, all right, you get a foot-long Subway sandwich and everybody else gets this homemade chicken whatever goulash (laughs) that mom made because that's what we got, baby. (laughs) That's what we got, baby. Uh, So then, okay, so then it's like lunchtime's over. We go meet the grandparents for bowling. Uh, my parents and my wife's parents came and met us for bowling, which was cool. And I bring that part up specifically because we were like, hey, we want to do happy birthday with the grandparents. and But it's like, we don't. what are we going to bring this? A whole cake and it's just going to be nasty and gross and melty in the car. Because we were driving like you know, 30 minutes to go meet in the bowling alley. So it was convenient for my parents to meet up with everybody. Bro, bring it into the bowling alley. Well, yeah, but the car ride there, it's very hot where we live. It's like 9,500 degrees. Turn so, your air conditioning on, bro. Well, it is still, but like a regular cake. So anyway, Mike, or someone who the day before, the car, the cake, we were at the cake store cake. gathering all of these items, you dick weasel. And I'm I was telling like, you, the cake can make it, bro. I know, but listen to this. I go to the free. We're like, okay, what are we gonna bring? I was like, come with me. We go to the freezer aisle. We go to the frozen novelty section, and I get an ice cream pie, because one of those, it's one of those thaw and serve things. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. perfect. If we keep it in the freezer, bust it out, drive to the thing, bring it into the bowling alley. By the time we get done serving, you know, like bowling for. You know, however long, a half hour or so, this thing will be served. Everybody will be there. Bing, bang, boom. That's how it works. I mean, that ended up being a good idea and it worked out for you, but you could have got the cake. Just F. Well, here's the thing I made, I had this epiphany because my wife and I went to the (laughs) store. We were like, oh, let's go get him a cake. And we were like, oh, he asked for an orange cake. He's just. Pink's his favorite color, but he, you know, randomly is like, yeah, right now I like this. And right now he was like, I want an orange cake. And we're like, all right. So we go and we're like, oh, there's no orange cakes. And then it dawns on me after, you know, 14 birthdays between my nine-year-old and my four-year-old. You can make their cake, you lazy L.A. piece of shit brain. (laughs) Like, you don't have to buy one pre-made. You can make it. And I still didn't do it, like, from scratch. I got the box, and, you know, my wife helped with the frosting, making the coloring, and all that kind of stuff. So, but I was like, ooh, I saw this thing. Shout out to Doug Benson's Instagram feed. Um, I saw this thing where one of his friends made a cake where you cut into it, and a bunch of candy fell out. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to do that for my kid with sprinkles. That would be awesome. And then it will just pour out. And if they want to throw sprinkles on top, they can. It would be a lot of fun. So I made the cake on the night before. And then just up, my God. cut a hole in the middle of them using like a glass. So it was just right down the middle. And then just filled the top one with sprinkle. Filled it all with sprinkles from the top. And then when you cut into it, like a big, you got to do a big slice so it pours out. But did like a nice big slice and then just all poured out. It was fun. But That's you can make your own cake, great Mike. Dad. See, told you, great dad. That's very recent. I've always had the potential, but uh, I was getting in my own way there for quite a long time. But you know, no use crying over spilled milk. Pass. Just recognize it, get better, and be better. You know what I'm saying? There you go. That's being said, no, we're still, I, I was like, all right, so that was Sunday, and then yesterday, Monday, was 7-Eleven. So I took the kids to get Slurpees. It was free because Slurpee it's day, national. Right? Well, kind of. Kind of. It's free <laughs> if you have the 7-Eleven app. <laughs> and you sign in, and they scan your rewards thing, and then they give you a little cup, like a small size Slurpee. Or the cups are a dollar. And I'm like, I ain't downloading this stupid app just to get free <laughs> Slurpees. I have two dollars. You know, easy peasy, baby. Don't worry about this. 
And then we get this. I'll funny. even use debit, not credit, son. What? <laughs> so I was like, let me grab a drink for me. And then I go to the register. We stand in line because they're giving them out at the register since it's free slurpy day. They don't want people to assume they, it's free, which is smart. Good by them. So, because there was a lot of foot traffic in there. So we get up to the register. I'm like, two Slurpee cups. I, I'm just going to pay for them. Two bucks. And he's like, it, you know, it's a younger dude. And he's having trouble communicating with me. And he's just like, it's, it's $2. And put in your phone number. And right on the screen, it's like, <laughs> if you type in your mobile number, it'll sign you up. And I was like, nah, I'm good, man. And he's like, he's like, but, but it's not for you know it's not free and i'm like i know two dollars like thumbs up <laughs> we're good like waving them off like i don't know how to communicate this to you i'm fine with paying the two dollars and he just keeps pointing at it so i'm like fine i don't even care i'll put it it's gonna text me and then i'll just text reply stop or whatever and, and that'll be that. i'll block the number i don't give a shit so no. i type in my phone number my real phone number because i don't want it to bounce back or something like i just wanted this to be over with so i type in my real number and then it's like okay thanks i'm like all right he's like ringing me up and then it says enter your email address and i was like no 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 you lied you shit no hell no so then my kids are standing next to me and my whole thing when my kids are around because i told you like i like to dick around with uh you know telemarketers like i'll just sing to them or just do weird shit just for fun so if the kids are around I'll answer and say something silly, you know, but like, is Farts McGarts there? Like, hey, how's it going? You know, like, something stupid. So uh, I put in Farts, the email address, Farts, at Google.com was like a, it, like one of those instant buttons. It was at Google or at Yahoo app, some shit. Definitely not AOL. And it, it came up and it flashed up and it was like, this email has already been registered. And then the guy like looked at me and it was like, like kind of shook his head a little bit. Like it definitely charged me the $2. and was like, that was already taken. And I was just like, okay, I didn't want this in the first place, man. So then we yeah. just walked away with our Slurpee cups, but it's just, I wanted people to know that, the farts <laughs> laughter community is still thriving out there. People are out there registering under farts at google.com. <laughs> We're still doing good, people. America's out yeah. there. There are people out there just as funny as you, my guy. And I'm going to laugh at I sure should that hope not, Mike. Hilarious. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. It's going to take a lot longer to do this than <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> Oh, uh, moving yeah, right along that. to uh, people that are just getting paid, which is the goal, right? Right? One Did of you them. Ever think about the fact that that might be someone's real email address, though? Uh, maybe. Not a joke for the fart community. Somebody actually has the email address of farts at gmail.com. What if it's Matter one fact, of the... <laughs> I'm going to send them an email and see if they exist. If they respond, it's going to be fucking start of the show next week, buddy. <laughs> I want you to read it monologue style if if you get a response. I got you. All right. Don't don't fail me though. You gotta follow through with that. So no, I'm, I'm Zach Levine, like right 215, Zach Levine, 215 million over five years for Mr. Zach Levine with a weird spaghetti noodle knee. What's going on? Mr. Here? Zach Levine is that no, my bad. Sorry. Zach Levine, you're a fucking genius because I would have took the money too. The dumbasses are the fools who gave it to you. So who the GM now? We still got like no cross is there. Sorry, no disrespect, my guy, RFP. Um I don't even know who the GM of the board. I think it's like John Paxson, Paxson and Gar Foreman. Both I of them should have been fired. Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> no, that's like a different dude. But I know them too. <laughs> Do you? Name two yeah. songs. Shit, I should have asked you who they were first. Damn it. Did you know that there the was music? Dudes, yeah. I told you, I knew they were like. Name two songs. Play guitars and shit. Name two songs. 
I definitely don't know two songs. Name one. I don't know one. You don't know Mrs. Robinson? Everybody knows Mrs. Robinson. Who is Mrs. Robinson? Dustin Hoffman's Lady and the Graduate. She Which I've never cool, seen. I know I need to see it, but I'm like young. The dude, Bulls signed him for that much money. There. That's pretty much saying that we are on a championship team, bro. Like they're giving up on championship aspirations because there's no way. Don't you have Lonzo locked up for a couple of years? Yeah, but no way you win the championship if Zach Levine is your best player, bro. That's well, who else do you have on the team? You have Lonzo, you have Zach. Lonzo, and we have DeRozan. We have a good team. Oh, We're going to be a playoff yeah. team next year. Well, then, what are you bitching about? Because I want a championship team, but I I don't want a playoff team. You know Michael Jordan played for the Bulls? You know, when you're doing that's the standard, if you ain't winning chips, the hell with you, okay? You know, the NBA said it last week, the NBA 2K23 is coming out, and Jordan's on the cover, which I don't understand why. He should be on NBA 2K45. (laughs) So, they're like 22 years early. Nah, he's going to be on both. He's coming back, and he's going to be on that one too, buddy. No, his you know real I mean? number. So, okay. Jordan. So, we got some trade rumors in the NBA. Now, they're Jordan. saying Donovan Mitchell's on the table after this Rudy Gobert, you know, fiasco. There's this aftermath. is like, yeah, but yeah. I know we just signed him <laughs> to a huge deal, but you can kind of have him if you want him. Yeah, you want to pay that huge money because they're like, oh, we're going to do a full rebuild. They got all those picks from the Go Bear trade. They're about to get a whole bunch of picks from Donovan, and they're hoping to land some gems and start over. Shit. I'd be going about it the same way. Paying someone 40 something million dollars to stink. Like, we're not even, like, we know we're not championship caliber, and we got to pay you $43 million a year. Dude, they lose the in the 80s to low 90s, but Donovan Mitchell has 35 points. And you're like, yeah, and he's nobody fucking shots. cares, Donovan. You're not winning. You know, like, it's, it, you know, you're putting the he ball. He takes 32 up. shots to get those 35 points. 28 times. <laughs> no, like, nice. he's not efficient. He's not efficient at all. And. He can't get him over the hump. Just tell me, do you think Donovan Mitchell is the best player on a championship team? How about a uh, Western Conference Finals team? No, <laughs> like, no, like no, maybe no, second round of the playoffs, no, but that's no. it. He's a Robin. He, has he to would go be somewhere the third best the player on the Bucks. He probably would be the third best player on the Bucks. I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? It would be a close, close battle, but he'd still probably be the third. The third, he would be the third option in uh, uh, game. Is there a team scenario. that thinks they're close and they need a scoring option? Then you trade for Donna, like the Hornets. If the Hornets think they can make a run at the championship with their new big man and Melo and a couple wings, and now you know Mal Bridges has got domestic violence charge, so you're like, oh, we're gonna give up on him and send him to Utah where he can get stay out of trouble, sign and trade him Hornets and a couple other up. pieces. And him and a couple other pieces to Utah for Diamond and make a run in the East with Melo, Mark Williams, Donovan, and whatever you have left from that you don't trade. I mean, the East is only but so good. Shit, that's a decent team to try to make a run. Atlanta traded for DeJounte Murray is trying to make a run. I'm yeah. Sure. Everybody thinks like, they got a oh, chance. Right? Okay, that actually, okay. Okay. I mean, because they're finally going to they accept the fact that Trey isn't a point guard. I don't know why anyone ever pays him that point guard. He's a fucking scorer, bro. That's he what can he pass does. It. Yeah, he happens to be able to pass it, but he's been scoring since high school. Like, he's a bucket. Somehow, some way, the little guy can get a bucket. And it'll even shake you off. I like DeJounte, man. I think he's a I think he's a good piece of their team. I still don't think they're a championship team. I think they're they're they need they need like I think they're favorite. a wing away. I know I you're gonna hate wing. you're gonna hate this. But um oh gosh, I just blinked. Who's the guy that you hate? That just he won a title with Milwaukee. He was Toronto, Milwaukee. He was just with the Heat. PJ Tucker. Like oh, they need like a PJ Tucker yeah. type of a player to just be like, listen, here's how you fucking win in the playoffs, okay? Like li- you can do all your shit to get all your money and endorsements during the regular season. Here's how you win in the playoffs, okay? Let me show you. 
he just signed with the Sixers like yeah. a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully that helps them because they need that type of player too. Someone is yeah. going. Put a foot in I know. I don't know why him. everybody relies on James Harden for the veteran thing. Just because he's played a long time doesn't mean he's has veteran qualities. No, he doesn't have. He's the Odell qualities. Beckham Jr. of the NBA, and he folds when the pressure gets on. Man, exactly. I hate it. I hate those type of guys. Oh, how he do you feel? Big so, bucks, baby, switching to uh, football, your pride and joy. Uh, how do you feel about? UCLA and USC joining the Big Ten in 2024? Question mark? Yeah. Okay. I love it. I want to see like the proposal from a couple of years ago where there's like four power conferences. Everybody just slides. They're talking about two. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. That's even better. Like, make this shit like the NFL, baby. AFC and the NFC. So, how Brandy. many teams would you prefer in this? Power Conference League, whatever they they would call it, the Collegiate many, Athletic Association, the CAA. I just dude, how many, ga- how many games on. are in a season? Uh, usually twelve. Then twelve. Twelve teams. Yeah, no thirteen. Uh oh, right when it's getting good, Mike's freezing up. Hang on. He's coming back. Okay, hang on. You froze up. So, wait. How many teams? 13 teams? That's it? Yeah. No, that's like the LIV. It would just be versus the PGA. Like, it would just be the same 13 over and over and over. But you I need like at least two. Two is like drastic. I want to see four conferences, 13 teams each. Full okay. round robin. Which means, you, I mean, not full round robin. You play every team. The year of home or away switches every year. But you play so you want in your fifty-two teams at least one. I was gonna say like forty-eight, but you you want fifty-two teams. Yep, top two out of every conference makes the playoffs, and then you just go see from that there. was something I talked with my buddy who's a huge college football fan. We used to go back and forth. He's a Nebraska buddy. Um, he, uh, him, and I used to go and talk about you know before the college football playoff was a thing, like how how it would make sense, and I'm like, what if it was just like you started out with quote unquote conferences, but it was just a bracket and it was double elimination style and it was a loser, you know, a loser's bracket would go. So it was like, if you kept losing, you would just keep playing losers. And if you keep winning, you keep playing winners. And then by the end of the season, everybody still has a bowl game. That way everybody still gets paid. You could have 48 teams in this thing. That's enough diversity, but also keeps the competition tight. You know what I mean? Like like a South Florida or a UCF or whatever uh, like would be like the worst team, like team like 47-48. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying, but I don't know, 48. You're suggesting 52 with four and 13 per conference. No, I didn't say that was too many. I said that's a good number, but 48 and two conferences? How the hell are you going to whittle that down? No, 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 not necessarily two. can't play each other. Well, you do a tournament style. Oh, you did like a full year tournament. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's a 12-round tournament, and the last round is the bowl game. Now... It's double elimination, so there will be two two teams at the end. Yeah, but that's a lot of teams to dwindle down to. But I no, know, but if, okay, so man. hang on. 48 down to 24, that's week one. 24 down to 12. And mind you, everybody keeps playing. They not, just keep you're playing. Not, you're not down to, see, you can't say it like that. You're not technically down to 24 because there's a loser's bracket. So those guys are still alive. They have I know, but two I'm games saying, to be out. Okay, uh, let's assume there's multiple teams, at least two, that go undefeated for for as long as we can here. Okay, let's see how yeah. long the longest season would be. That's what you would need. Let's just walk it through. For right it to work straight like right. through like that. So hang on. So 48 to 24 is week one. 24 to 12 is week two. 12 to 6 is week three. Six to okay. See, this is where it gets tricky because that's where it would be. Multiple teams would probably be undefeated, but well, I don't know that you... all six of those teams could be are still undefeated, bro. Like right? You went three weeks. All six of those teams are still undefeated. 
but they're possibly now going to be playing so then somebody you still, so of then those that's where, so then, other team from the loser. So how many weeks are we point, in now? 24, 12. Yeah. Six, we're only in week three. So we would have also a ton of teams that would be one loss. So those would still be yeah. higher seeds. So they're playing the, the no-loss teams. And as soon as you have two losses, you're out. You just keep playing in a loser's bracket to try and get a better bowl game. Because guess what? If you play in the toilet bowl, you get yeah, paid toilet bowl money. Teams, but if so you earn three, and have have all the bowl games. teams you get, have at least one loss. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, what I'm saying is by week three, when there's six undefeated teams left, there's 42 teams with at least one loss. So then, depending on how their old, old other games go, eliminated, stay, who did, right? Like, so, but there's also so going to be a bunch of teams with two. The losses. first week, the first week, those forty-two are going to be dwindled down to twenty-one because they'll all be playing each other. But then, once they get intertwined with the undefeated, now you got all different types of scenarios that can right. play out. And, Which means that so it's it's going to go. That can go on for for like probably yes, no, probably seven to nine weeks so we're at week three so that would be a 10 to 12 week season which is right about correct if it goes long it's 13 but it's it's not going to go that long with a field that small with double elimination it just isn't so i mean maybe i'll do I mean, the, maybe i'll work out the math but that's going to take a little while so not today but that would be my suggestion if I anybody asked. Excuse me. It's not a bad suggestion. Thanks, buddy. Just getting the numbers and make sure that it fits within the time frame. Mm. But what happened with UCLA, one of the, I mean, they were ready to jump anyway. They just want to be wanted. Do you know what I mean? They're bridesmaids yeah. to USC. But um, Under Armour signed a deal with UCLA to be their sports apparel provider uh, in 2020, I think. And since, it was a 15-year, $280 million deal. And since uh, they were not able to have fans attend a certain amount of basketball and football games, which was their main draw, which I'm sure was a clause in the contract, they pulled the contract from UCLA, Under Armour did, and was like, yeah, you guys, uh, even when you come back, you're not going to be that great. So, yoink, we're taking this money back. So UCLA jumped at the chance to go to the Big Ten. Yeah, and now Under Armour's going to look like assholes when they sign with whoever they sign with because they're in the Big Ten now. All it's going to take is one or two winning seasons in blue. Oh, for sure. Especially in football, you know, well, yo, how the fuck do they make these conferences work? Like, how far does Michigan have to travel to play UCLA on a fucking Saturday? Like, well, well it's on. not that big of a deal because it hasn't been that way for a long time. Maryland to UCLA, yeah. what? That's gonna suck. Maryland to the USC or the other way around. Well, dude, that's one of the reasons why, like, you know, some people say Notre Dame's schedule is sometimes is soft, but their travel schedule is what makes it brutal because they're going from coast to coast. Like, sometimes they're in the middle, but they're going from coast yeah, but, to coast all the time because that's where all the rivalries are. I mean, all these two are big school, not big name them, schools now, so I'm not going to say any shit about it. Like, they're all riding private jets with tutors and shit on the planes with them, so they're getting their work done. They don't they need to do their something. Balls. They're definitely, like, Notre Dame, you don't think Notre Dame kids are doing their schoolwork while playing football? You're shitting me. Well, Notre Dame, yeah. Miami? <laughs> no. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Hey, Catholics versus mouth. convicts, son. You know what's up. And secondly... We're, we might have the number one pick in the draft next year. So watch your mouth. Sit back. Watch this work out. And if you want to make some money this year, people. Don't listen Miami. to Mike. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna tell you uh, the perfect way to make some real money. Hey, right? hey speaking Bet of. Miami speak, to hey, would you stop leaning into the mic? You can't hear you. You get all fuzzy. Oh, so. Go ahead. I didn't Miami I to yet. win. First, you bet Miami to win the ACC, 
right? Which Notre Dame is in. Not going to happen. Who the hell cares about Notre Dame? You bet, you bet Miami to win the ACC, and then you double down on that by betting them to win the chip. The odds on the Miami to win the chip right now, you're going to get paid. Astronomical because so are the chances. So listen, listen, buddy. I will, I'll <laughs> gladly bet you that Miami doesn't even win the ACC, and I'll give you really good odds on that. But how we doing on our other bets, buddy? Your beard's looking awful scraggly. How your balls doing? My beard is looking awful scraggly. Do you have a video? You know I didn't do it because you don't have a video, bro. I'm not going to send a video of my balls, though, because that's pretty not true. I know. That's what I said. Don't send me a video, but you can, you know. No, I'm going to send you a video. You're going to pull. Well, that's fine. Send me a video of your legs. But when are you going to do it, Mike? I know that you got a lot going on right now, but you you got to put this on the calendar, sir. I would it's say on, by the end of... It's, it's on the calendar already, but, don't that worry. Not, you're lying to me. <laughs> I promise you it's on my mental calendar. I don't have an actual <laughs> technical know, plan because I don't keep a saying. fucking calendar. <laughs> mental calendar. <laughs> it is. I already have it mentally set By the end of the month, this better mind. be done. Otherwise, I'm whooping yeah. your ass. There you I go. See you. Cool. We're going to do a friendly Cool. And why'd you send match? me that fucking ear thing like I can do that shit myself? I don't even know what the fuck was going on in that little shit. No. The ear thing, that one we're doing together. You got to shave yourself, though. I don't want any part of that. I don't know why you thought you, you shave my nuts, man. Why not? <laughs> oh, Your wife would disown you, bro. Well, so, hey. <laughs> the NFL. Moving to the NFL. We're going to move a little rapidly over here. The uh, Heinz Field, <laughs> the Steelers, where the Pittsburgh Steelers play, is now... Accrisher. What the fuck is Accrisher? Exactly, dude. Like, is nothing sacred anymore? No, not if you don't have enough money, huh? They ain't selling enough fucking ketchup. Bro, <laughs> yes, they do. But they do. Not, not on the NFL level, clearly. Like, are there any classically named stadiums left? No, all of these stadiums are going to have new names because you know who's making the money? These new people, Amazons and Crypto and Accrisure. Do you think it's Whatever the hell they do. Apple Stadium, formerly Wrigley Field? Yes. Apple oh, Stadium. Oh, that would be the fucking worst kick in and the dick. T- and wait till they buy a stadium and then technology that bitch out. Oh my goodness, bro. Like it's gonna be like state of the art everything Apple. Okay, okay. Everybody's gonna want to you're go. okay. You're a Red Sox fan. Fenway Park is even if you're not a Red Sox fan, just a baseball fan, you're like, dude, I gotta see a game at Fenway. It's a classic, classic stadium. What would be the worst sponsor to buy out Fenway Park and for the stadium to be named? Hmm. The worst sponsor? I don't know. I don't know, like KFC or something. I don't know. I hate KFC. KFC. That chicken stinks. You getting soft on me, brother? You you start. You came out of the gates with Hitler. Now you're saying KFC. I'm not saying you need to go that far deep, but I'm just saying, like, you know, what would be a weird thing for Fenway Park to? Oh, what's like a famous bagel I mean, company? It's Boston, so some I know. But what's some... like a famous bagel company, like Noah's Bagels or something from New York? That's just like, oh, like, are you kidding me? That's something that's very New York specific. Like, that would probably be the worst. And you had to call it that. Like, I'm going to blank stadium. I'm going to Steinbrenner Stadium. Like, the Steinbrenners brought the stadium just outright, brought the rights to the stadium. What if that's what they did? What if they're like, listen, how about this for a trade deal? We'll give you Aaron Judge. You can have him. It's like signing away the rights to Babe Ruth. We'll give you Aaron Judge, but we get to rename the stadium for 50 years. Or however long the Babe Ruth curse was, 80-some years. And be like, and it's going to be called, like, what's the the most awful Yankee, like, like the Red Sox killer in your mind? Because you're a fan. It's probably Jeep. I hate Jeter. Really? But I hated Jeter for a long time. 
Yeah, I hated G for a long time. G gets a lot of big hits. You wanna know who else gets a lot of big used to get a lot of big hits in fucking Red Sox Yankees oh. games? Sorry ass Jason Giambi, bro. Like I hate that guy. Jason Giambi. That guy used to blow my fucking balls. Cause he always was in a position to get a big hit and always ended up getting a big hit. What oh, about Mookie this. Wilson Stadium? <laughs> Who the hell is Mookie Wilson? Mookie Wilson. Oh my gosh, now I don't really remember. Mookie Wilson was the guy. I think he was the guy that scored or the guy that hit the ball on the uh, Buckner play. Oh, yeah, I think I, he, I think Mookie guy. Wilson is the guy that hit the ball on the on the Buckner play. So even worse than Bill Buckner Stadium, Mookie Wilson Stadium, like oh, they, got, they already got a pole named after Buckner. Um, at the stadium, but no, they would never name it that even. Like that's going too far. Can't name it after that guy. Okay. Like the owner, right. the people who own the stadium would never accept that. They would never accept Steinbrenner even. But if Steinbrenner had some way to backdoor buy the stadium through like some silent auction type of shit, like naming rights, so. A Rod you know, Stadium. Like to hell with that punk, because he see? was supposed to be one of us. I know. No, he see, was supposed see, to be see, one see. of us. He signed off at the deal, so I don't hate him too much. He actually liked us, but he went with the money debt. Uh, so. uh, A Rod Stadium. And the visitors' dugout is the Johnny Damon dugout. <laughs> that coward. He, he, he went and chased the money too. Did you ever see his DUI for video? To, no, I can't yeah. be mad at people for wanting to make their family rich. That thing is rough. If anybody wants to go into it, anyway. <laughs> uh, hey, real quick, since we're episode eighty. And we were talking about the NFL there for a bit. What uh, my favorite is Jerry Rice. I think he's the greatest of all time, and he's a 49er, which is fantastico. I think uh, he's the greatest football player of all time. Okay. Yeah, Jerry Rice is the greatest football player of all time, to my in my view. We have this argument all the time because everybody hits me with the Tom Brady and all his championships, and I respect it. But if you want to talk, oh, you're just talking player, about overall football player. Football player, Jerry the Rice. greatest of all time, ranking everybody from time. ever. Yeah, I agree. Tom Brady, Tom Brady would be four. Who would be two? Mr. LT himself. Okay. Who would be three? My three is Joe. I, I don't have a, I have Joe over Tom still, even though Tom has seven. Joe Montana, I love it. That's yeah. my fave. I mean, I was a Niners. Niners guy, still am. All the way. I'm wearing a Giants San Francisco. And I'm a Cowboys fan, which sucks to say because. But it is what it is, man. Like, so, to, you see this shirt the, I got for Father's Day? San Francisco it's Giants. It's a great shirt. I think I'm going to wear it because guess where we're going? Where? To San Francisco. No, better. The Home Run Derby and the All Star Game, son. What is the All Star Game this year? At Dodger Stadium. Oh well. Our next I knew you were I knew you were going, my guy. That's what we gave our, our nine like year old for home. his birthday. That was his big <laughs> birthday present was well, we took him to Universal Studios with his friends, but like our big like personal thing to him was like, Okay, we're going for we're buying the package for the weekend because he loves a celebrity softball game and the futures game and all that kind of he's like, What can we go to the convention center? What day is the convention like he's all geeking out on it, so uh, so up, man. I'm going to take him to the home run derby and we're trying to work it out to where maybe an extra ticket we can work out for the all, all-star game. So, but yeah, that's going to be so cool going to the home run derby. We're in the nosebleeds of the nosebleeds, but who cares? Nobody cares. Who the fuck when cares? they're ripping for home runs, foul balls goes to the upper deck, baby. So, yeah. you know, we'll see what's up. We'll see what's yeah, up. Yeah. And just being there is going to be so much yeah. fun. It's going to be hell of an experience. And I'm at night, it. it's like 75 degrees. It's going to be so perfect. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. So uh, next week, you can look forward to, or if you don't like hearing about awesome experiences, then you can skip it. But that'll be a recap for next week. Um, 
That being said, I know you're going to watch that stuff. What else do you watch in these days? Uh, I'm back full board, man. So everything's back. Big Brother's back. Um, yeah. Love it. Married at First Sight is back. So, you know, man, we back. We back. Got shows in rotation, man. We're the summer trashy to... TV season. Mike's trashy favorite time TV is upon season, us. Season, it's baby. trashy TV and then The Wire at night. The right? Wire at night. And Have you started um, it? I actually, yeah, I started it and I'm slipping some, um, damn, what's the show? With Vince and Aquaman. I can't, Entourage. That's what used to be my shit. So I'm running that back on HBO too. <gasps> I mean, it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. It was one. Of, I'll tell you what Entourage was. I watched Entourage like, I mean, a decade after it had been off the air. Like I think I watched it like seven or eight years ago for the first time. Um, and I have friends who were like, you know, kind of obsessed with it, and whatever. But to know with the Johnny Damon story, it's like, yo, you couldn't pick better because Vince looks nothing like Johnny. I mean, you know the. But anyway, so Entourage, when I watched it, I was like, it was one of those shows where I'm like, I liked it just enough to not stop watching it. But I didn't like it any more than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how much I liked it. Which and I wonder if I Damon. ran it back, if I would like it. You probably would like it. And his name was Matt Damon, but I called him Johnny Damon because Johnny Drama. That's not Matt Damon, buddy. That is their fucking... That is who it is. Matt Damon. That's that Matt. is not Matt Damon. And that is, it's not even Matt Dillon, who you're thinking of. It's Matt Dillon's brother. It's like Matt Dillon's what? older brother. Bill no, no, no. Johnny Dillon. Drama isn't... No. I know who Johnny Drama is. The character, dude. I'm saying... His real I life called... name. His The, the actor. Correct? Yes. I wasn't saying that, but what I was saying was initially before you started talking, I was saying that they made the show. The show is about Matt Damon, but I said the show is about Johnny Damon. God. So I was correcting myself God. because I was fucking his name up because well, of Johnny know I don't Drama. Listen to you ever. I know you don't listen when I talk, bro. It's I'll okay. I still fucking talks. love you. That's why stand up is great for me. <laughs> Nobody else is supposed to talk. <laughs> stand up is great for you because you're a funny fucking guy. I'm trying, brother. Uh, speaking of what what did you watch in and stand up? I watched Dave. Not I didn't watch. It wasn't stand up, but I watched Dave Chappelle's theater dedication of the his like school where he went to high school. I guess the Duke Ellington School of Arts. And it was interesting. It was it was good. I mean, I loved it. Um, he I said some pretty, went there. I, it's so interesting because, you know, everybody, a lot of people, I should say, you know, consider Dave Chappelle the, the current goat of stand up, if not the greatest of all time. Did it, he say some more homophobic stuff? Uh, no, okay. I don't think so, but no, but what he did say, which I appreciate is he goes, listen, you know, some of the kids were pissed about. I, I'm paraphrasing, but just to kind of give you some insight as, as to the part I really enjoyed that he was just honest about was basically he's like, listen, I am the most precise stand-up comic of all time. If you watch The Closer, it is a masterpiece front to back. I'll leave it at that. No, I'm a once-in-a-generation talent. And I was just like... Damn, he just said that to everybody. Like, good for you, dude. Because if that's what everybody's telling you, why not just acknowledge it? Why not? So that part was kind of interesting. I'm a fucking I like, man. I was like, all right, bro, you go. And then as of this recording, uh, Bill Burr Live at Red Rocks has come out. So I'm going to watch that uh, probably tomorrow. But I'll review that next week because Bill Burr is one of the best. So, in my opinion. So, I'm looking very much forward to watching that. Are you watching anything else trashy on Netflix? Like, How to Build a Sex Room? No. It's just, that's a real show? Yeah, that's a real show. And guess who's saying How to Build a Sex Room? 
Who's telling us how to do it, Mike? Guess. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> a fucking old white lady. Well, she would probably know how to build a sex room. She's she's like, listen, I've been a slut for a long time. Let me tell you how this is done. <laughs> if you had a, a mansion or a giant house or whatever, or whenever that happens, are you going to have a sex room? Or would you no. have a sex room? Fuck no. Why? Because that's just it's pointless. I can have sex in my actual room. Well, yeah, but it's, it's like for different, sex. it's for sex assistants to do it different ways and with different things. Everything I, I know do, you're I a plain guy, but come on, dude. You can't tell me like a little pillow a here and there shit, wouldn't baby? hurt. All right. You get you a swing? And yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you, kid? You're never going to use it. I mean, if I, yeah, I haven't installed one because I don't think I would. But if I would, right. then I would install right. one. So what are you going to do? You're going to be in your... So just, let's just play this out, right? So you got this house. So the sex room is what going to be next door. You're going to be able to, like, boogie down to it. I don't know. Because this is... Because this requires you to be in the bed, get in the mood, and then say, oh, no, we don't want to do it regular, though. Come on, boo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, hang room. on. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, this is, uh, this is the juicy part. <laughs> you only get horny in bed? No, but wait, you're like, only willing to have sex in bed? That's where you have that's where I have sex at. Bro. Only like, else do you, no at 40 pretty much now, yeah. Like where where are these random places at 40 where, okay. years old, You don't have to tell you kids. don't have to cry, be you know, timeline it. Where where was the last place you had sex that was not a bed? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I know. I, and listen, I don't care what the frequency, whatever, has been. Think back to a time that you were not in a bed having sex and try and think if that was the most recent time. That was definitely not the most recent time, bro. <laughs> like, I know it's not the most time. recent time you had sex. I'm saying besides a bed. A car. Okay, thank you. Was that so hard? That was long ago. It wasn't at nowhere near 40, bro, because this 40-year-old body is yeah. not bending in a, no damn car Hell to do the no. fuck. Get in the backseat. It's like the backseat. No. Hell the no. The backseat of what? Yeah, right, bro. Exactly. This no, body right here, don't say it's doing the backseat of nothing. I give all you freaky diggies a round of applause. Have fun with your, your sex swings and your car sex. I'm good. Dude, I lived in a house when I was in my early 20s where um, one of the girls, you know, we were cool with the uh, boyfriend. And one of the girls, the boyfriend came over and was like, hey, I'm installing a sex swing in the room, like elbow, elbow. We're like, okay, man, you didn't have to tell us that. Like, that's her business. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not judging you. Have fun with that. but I'm uh, good, bro. What happens if you get up there and you like your old ass like pull a muscle? Or some shit? I know, I know. I know. You get Fuck Deuce that, Bigelow, you just caught upside down. You can't get out. Yeah. yeah, let me get a shape first, and then we'll talk about a sex week and right we'll finish, and you're just special chair yourself from the belly button <laughs> to the chair. Gross. You're disgusting. Oh, uh, hey. Hold that. So speaking of having fun, there's a docu series on Netflix called "How to Change Your Mind," and it's about psychedelics. How do you feel about psychedelics? Um, take psych. Um, I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing to say. Would you I'm ever? Take one in my life. Would you ever? No. I'm Not even now. mushrooms. Young... Mushrooms are natural. No, that's some young kid shit. I mean, that's something that if you would have done it for the first time, you do it as a kid. You don't do it for the first time at 40. Yes, you do. That Even is. Though I'm not is. quite 40. I'm 38. I keep aging myself. I don't know why, but I figure I'm up here already. So what the hell? But You're no, you don't do it for the good. first time. That's like getting your first tattoo at 40. Like A lot like of people are doing at 40. it. <laughs> no, it makes no sense. Oh, I love mushrooms. I haven't done them in a really long time, yeah, but I but am sure looking forward your to first the next mushroom. time I do them. 
I'm sure you think you did your first mushroom a long. I did. I'm trying to think before your thirty second birthday. Relax. So, like, uh, is that when you did? You, did you just burp into the mic? No, that I said fucking uh, uh, no. <laughs> I would have said excuse me. I'm I'm fairly polite like that. Yeah, I'm scared of the uh, the chemical ones like acid and ecstasy and all that. Although I've tried to take multiple ones and got a bunch of duds. Just you know, got it's hard to do that kind of stuff because it's like, oh, you take this pill or this thing you put on on your tongue, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, it takes a while. So it's like by the time you've already completed the transaction and realize you got some bunk, you know, something, you it's get, like, oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, had, I know a guy who took like a whole sheet of fucking acid and he said he ain't trip at all. Some bullshit. Good thing he got it for free. So, well, that's, yeah, it's because people are like, oh, guess what? I just gave that somebody. I bet you he uses it. That's all it is. <laughs> you know, or the big one was. Oh my! I told my friend I didn't want them to take it. Here, I'll give it to you at a discount. You know, it's ten bucks instead of twenty five or whatever. And I was always like, I can scrounge up ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that well, I always, did you trip or did you find never, out, oh, never once bullshit. every time I tried a stagecoach. I tried, <laughs> I tried a bunch of different places, but mushrooms have always been good to me. Have always been good to me. And I know you're lactose intolerant, but the trick that I learned for me was to blend them up in a shake. I like vanilla. Uh, because then it kind of coats your stomach because sometimes you get, you know, a little nauseous when you're eating fungus. So, Do you know where psychedelic mas- mushrooms come from? Cow shit. <laughs> I clean off and the you shit. Enjoy, you enjoy eating <laughs> it's not like, like I, people, it's not like I'm sitting like two girls, one cup, like with my mouth open under <laughs> the back of a cow, like waiting. No, the fact that people actually go it, dig into cow shit to get out mushroom to sell. It's, it's not fucking, me. I it's these hippy dippy motherfuckers. Let them be. No, you're just eating the fucking shit. It's just washed off shit. Exactly. There was shit on that mushroom at some point. Guess what? There's shit on a lot of produce, brother. Your mushroom literally grows through the shit. Oh, get out of town. Oh, all right. Well, speaking of getting out of town, do you know who D.B. Cooper is? The legend of D.B. Cooper? The legend of no. So D.B. Cooper, from what I can remember, which is not much, was he did some sort of robbery, hijacking of some sort. And he jumped out of an airplane with this treasure and his loot somewhere in the mountains and was never to be seen again. <laughs> and some people are like, it's folklore. Some people are like, no, this, this was real. So it's like a little docu-series on D.B. Cooper. It's called D.B. Cooper, Where Are You? And I thought... Since you're like, I can't tell, are you a conspiracy theorist? You kind of are sometimes, or you you kind of yeah. indulge a little. I'll listen if it makes sense. What? Okay, what's a conspiracy theory that you believe in? What you mean? I don't know. No, like, do you have it. anything that's like off the beaten path? Are you a flat earther? No, no, that's not. But that's not conspiracy theory. That technically can be. Someone actually wanted to prove that. They can technically prove that shit. That the Earth's not flat, flat like this. All you gotta do is travel the globe, and if you go leave us and go one way, depending on what you land, you can tell that where Earth is flat or not. Because if it was flat, you would go to one place. If it was a fucking circle, you would go somewhere else. So here you know there, people who fucking take the Earth flat are just kind of bonkers, but. Have fun with that shit. All right. So, what um, do you have that's close to that, or that people might consider on the same wavelength as that? I don't think I have anything on the same wavelength as that. Nothing that extreme. <laughs> no. Do you think? Do you think the government tracks us, or how? How bad do you? Definitely. Think? I mean, like, but that, how? Like, that. how? What's the worst way you think that they track us? Because we're all pretty aware of like the general listening and tracking on our. Devices. Oh, I think they listen to pretty much everything. I think there's cold words that'll. I think that's cold words that set shit off. Like if you say something about 
the guy that's in office. I'm not going to say it because I don't want them to start listening to our podcast. But if you say that word, technically, they'll probably start listening to your shit to see what you're going to say next. And it's probably not long that they listen because they probably ain't out here just like violating our amendment rights left and right. But I also believe 9 11 is conspiracy theory, too. But Ooh, um, which one? Which one? What do you mean? That it was rigged? Yeah, that, that the U.S. technically was a part of that shit and it was all for the whole. Like they had to be okay with a certain shit to get that oil money, the bushes mainly. Like, come on, man. It's too obvious. Their deals were tied, signed. Yeah, obvious. their deals were signed way too close to with this shit happening. Like, if y'all were cool with them and y'all got deal all deals with the people who blew up the fucking country, like, come on, bro. And y'all ain't pull out. Nobody noticed that they never pulled out those fucking oil deals. Like, oh, they blew us up. Yeah, but we still need that oil, bro. Like, come the hell on. Who y'all think? <laughs> like, yeah. That was okay. a setup from daddy. He's like, you got to go in there and finish the job. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Like, yeah. He need you to go ahead and make sure this gets taken care of so he gets this money right. <laughs> and like, so, but yeah, man, like, All right. it's a whole bunch of shit that goes well, on hey, behind the scene. On a lighter but note, if I, you want to know the truth behind if they're listening to us, watch that series on Netflix, something about the wet. I can't think of the exact name, but it's like something. But one of the episodes is about a guy who got locked up. Cause that's how they found them. Cause they were lo- using like a machine that they weren't supposed to use to be listening to all types of people. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just random people trying to find him. The information which is game or whatever you were watching. I don't know the name of, but the all name right. of the series is something you don't about a web. <laughs> the web of something. Oh yeah, the web of yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked. And about one it. of the episodes is about that, and the shit is wild. Well, let me tell you something, a show to watch that you might actually enjoy. And I encourage everybody to give it a shot because one of my very close friends was a producer on this show. It's called Claim to Fame on ABC and Hulu. Have you heard of this show, Mike? Claim to Fame. Yes. The fame, the show when they're trying to guess who, like, who they're famously related to? Correct. Uh, yeah, I've seen the. I've seen the. Um, and it's preview. hosted by the Jonas brother that nobody knows and somebody else. <laughs> and that's kind of the point <laughs> of the show. It's like you know, oh, I don't know. He looks like this person, or they look like this person. I don't know. And they go through all these clues and stuff like that. So the give Jonas it a watch, and if you don't like it, you don't like it. what? 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 <laughs> it's hosted by the Jonas brother that nobody knows what you said. Like that's how you refer to that guy. That's kind of the point. Yeah, his name is Frankie <laughs> Babylon. I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say that's really his name. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, Frankie or Frank or some shit, isn't it? That's fucked up, Jonas brother. We don't know, but I technically don't know you. So Fred, there's that. Fred buddy. Jonas. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick Jonas, Frederick Dingleberry Jonas. the Third, hosting <laughs> the Fame every Monday this summer on ABC. Uh, well, if you're not going to watch Claim to Fame, or after you're done, I should say after you're done watching Claim to Fame, um, or when you go to the gym, possibly, uh, check out this week's Spotify playlist. It's Marduk and Benny the Butcher. This one's kind of hard. So be ready for it if you want to listen to it. But it's good. Get your energy up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Perfect gym playlist, clearly. And Marduk was the uh, band shirt that I liked at the gym. So that's why, you know what I like to do. I like to plug and play all this stuff from my life into everything that we do. And that being said. Did you get that from the gym dude with the jeans? No, 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 no. no. (laughs) The guy that I like that is friends with the guy that I didn't like the way he operated in the gym. But okay. I was like, man, you're friends with that guy? Dang it. Because you were cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and also, the day this comes out, which is July 14th, 2022, I'll be doing um, Instagram Live with Grown Man Logic Podcast. So... That one is adult topics about some 
diverse issues, diversity issues and all that kind of shit and the gap between whites and blacks and all that stuff. So it's going to be a serious conversation, but we're going to try and have some fun with it. Uh, so check that out whenever you're listening to this. It's a good podcast regardless. Go check them out, Grown Man Logic Podcast. Uh, but on that note, make sure you guys take care of each other and be thankful for every day you got. And, uh, you know, Absolutely. sometimes just put away your bullshit or set to the side or really ask yourself why why it bothers you so much because if you really take the time to actually be angry about it and let that go and rationalize you realize it's not really worth it so let's just go forward with an open heart and see how that goes for a little while all right lead with love people i'm with you my god r.i.p miss margie r.i.p coach holloway I love you, my guy, man. You have a great week. All right. I love you too, dude. Peace.